everyone who enters medicine as a career wants to be a good doctor. But the reality is not every clinician achieves this goal. However, there are some scientifically proven characteristics that time and time again contribute to a doctor being perceived as proficient. If you can identify with any of these seven traits, then chances are that you'd make an exceptional medical professional. Hi, I'm Dr. Ollie, a junior doctor based in the UK, and I've scoured the scientific literature to bring you seven evidence-based signs of whether or not you'll be a great doctor, so that you can get a better idea of whether or not you should pursue the vocation. The first of the seven signs is communication. The fact is, you need to be a good communicator if you want to have any hope of being a good doctor. And the research backs this up. It just comes up time and time again in countless scientific papers researching into what makes up a good doctor. This 2017 paper titled, What is a Good Doctor? actually gives an overview of the literature on this topic. This research paper itself is actually a summary of 20 other research papers all looking at what makes a good doctor. And you guessed it, communication featured heavily. In all the questionnaires used to measure patient satisfaction, communication was a main topic. Whenever people had the chance to rate attributes at their own discretion, it was rated in almost all cases under the top five attributes too. This definitely tallies with common knowledge as well. You know, if you were to ask a random medical student, doctor or person on the street, as we've seen from these papers, they will rate communication up there with what's so important for a doctor to have. Because, you know, a doctor can have the best treatment plan in the world, but if they can't communicate it to the patient so that the patient knows what they need to do, knows how they can follow this treatment plan, then it's just going to be no use at all. Even if it's the technically most brilliant thing you've ever seen, if the patient doesn't understand it and can't follow it, it's not going to do them and their disease any good. What I thought was a really interesting point to note from this paper was the differences between what doctors thought made a good doctor and what patients thought made a good doctor. Here's a quote from the paper. Interestingly, patients had a stronger focus on communication skills, whereas doctors put more emphasis on medical skills. Balancing this discrepancy will be a challenge for future medical education. As doctors, I think we can easily fall into the trap of thinking our technical medical knowledge is sort of the key driving factor of what makes us a good doctor and what makes us good at our job. But from the patient's perspective, you know, they aren't able to judge if you have that you know, intricate technical knowledge of whether one treatment plan was very slightly technically better than the other that you chose, what they see and what they experience is your communication skills, your bedside manner, and how you interact with them. So that's what they rate really highly. Trait number two is integrity. And this is so important to being a medical professional. You have to be honest to be a doctor and you have to have strong moral principles. In this paper titled, What Makes a Good Doctor? Views of the Medical Profession and the Public. They actually got three different focus groups. One made up of medical school academics, one made up of general practitioners, and one made up of non-medical professionals. And they asked them, what makes a good doctor? And then sort of got this list of traits and characteristics. Physicians regarded being one, honest, and two, responsible and trustworthy as the two most important items. So as reported by doctors themselves from these interviews in this study, the characteristic of integrity is the top trait needed for a doctor to be good. For me, this was a really thought-provoking sentiment because these characteristics of sort of honesty, trustworthiness, openness, they're really difficult to teach. And you know, you can teach technical medical knowledge, you can teach facts about medicine, facts about diseases, how to treat disease, but teaching someone how to be honest, open, and sort of trustworthy, that's a massive challenge for medical schools. And the authors actually go on to say, selection criteria for admission to medical school should also consider humanistic non-cognitive traits. So they're actually making the direct recommendation to medical schools that maybe we should slightly shift the focus from these more academic cognitive abilities of applicants to more the sort of intangible, harder to measure, openness, honesty, and trustworthy characteristics because of how important they are in being a good doctor as reported in their own study. Characteristic number three is being a lifelong learner. And if you think about it, this makes sense for why it's so important for doctors to have as a characteristic, because science is always improving, always moving forward. There are new discoveries, new treatments available, new diseases. So as a doctor, you have to always keep your finger on the pulse and sort of be aware of these new advancements so you can always be offering the latest and best treatments to your patients. The fact is, if you don't enjoy learning and keeping up to date, then over a lifetime, you won't do it and you will fall behind. And if you fall behind, 
you'll become outdated and you'll be offering worse than available treatments to your patients. In this 2022 paper, they interviewed 13 medical doctors about what they thought made up an exceptional doctor. Not just a good doctor, but an exceptional doctor. Exceptionally good doctors were found to have up-to-date, extensive medical knowledge and skills, relate well with patients, and have excellent diagnostic abilities. Now that extensive medical knowledge, in reality, is only gonna come from a lifetime of learning about medicine. Now trait number four isn't necessarily one that immediately jumps to mind when you think about what makes a good doctor, because it's being humble. Being humble did actually feature in that 2017 summary paper titled, What is a Good Doctor? But they classified it in one of their top six categories under ethics. The 2022 paper on exceptionally good doctors also said, exceptionally good doctors tend to be humble, approachable, inspiring, and a long remembered role models. Although not at the top of the average person's list, humbleness actually is incredibly important to being a doctor. If you think about it, if you've got a top surgeon, one of the best in the world who can do incredibly intricate technical surgeries, if they're not humble, then they think everything is about them. But we know from medicine, the patient is at the center of everything we do. The patient is the focus of everything we do. So that doctor, by being humble, that surgeon, by being humble, is aware of the fact that their skills, their talent, is only to enable the treatment to be able to help this patient in front of them. The surgery is not so that they can show off their technical skills doing weird and wonderful surgery skills and techniques. It's so that they can do whatever they possibly can to best help the patient. Again, it's one of those characteristics that are incredibly difficult to teach, but is absolutely integral to being a good doctor. Characteristic number five is professional competence. And this is definitely a bit more intuitive as to why good doctors need this trait. To be perceived as a good doctor, the fact is that you're gonna need to be good at your job. And this is, of course, backed up by the evidence. This 2022 qualitative study titled Good and Bad Doctors interviewed 1,000 members of the Austrian public and asked them what makes a good doctor. Lo and behold, just under a third of people identified professional competence as being one of the key skills. I'd say this is good news for you and me because professional competence is definitely something we can easily work on. The reality is that with more hard work, more study, more practice, we will become better at our jobs, at medicine, we develop more knowledge, and so we can easily contribute to ourselves becoming better doctors. Professional competence is one of those characteristics that frequently features in other studies that I saw on the topic, such as being one of the other six main categories from that 2017 paper, What Makes a Good Doctor. Trait number six is one that I think is sometimes forgotten in the practice of modern medicine, and that's compassion. It's being compassionate. At the end of the day, one of the doctor's main roles is to relieve the suffering of their patients, and they can do that by being caring, empathetic, and compassionate towards their patients. In this 2007 study, they surveyed over 1,500 junior medical students to ask them what they thought made a good doctor. Junior and prospective medical students consistently valued a good doctor as a compassionate, patient-centered carer. That quote's actually picked up on another of the key themes from practicing medicine in general, and that's being patient-centered, which I think comes from the root of compassion, you know. If you're compassionate, you want to help this person as much as you can. You're sort of revolving around their needs, how you can best help them, and that all comes from that empathy, that compassion that lets you put the patient at the center of your care plan. Now, the last of the seven traits that go into being an exceptional doctor was actually picked up by those 1,500 junior medical students by mentioning being a listening informative communicator because it's being a good listener. Now, being a good listener can fit under the umbrella term of being a good communicator in communication, but it's such an important skill to proficiently practicing medicine, I thought it was worth pulling out on its own. By being a good listener, the patient in front of you will really feel like you listened, cared, understood what they had to say, which makes up a huge part of their perception of that interaction with you as a healthcare professional. A lot of complaints and claims against doctors actually come, the root cause of them comes from patients feeling like they haven't been heard, they haven't been listened to by healthcare professionals, and no one's really caring about their personal journey. This 2022 study titled, You're Exactly My Type, The Traits of a Good Doctor, actually phoned 1,000 subjects and asked them what they thought made up a good doctor. The items perceived as most important were takes time, 
listens and makes correct diagnoses. In say a 10 minute GP appointment, even if you can't physically afford to give that patient any more than their allotted 10 minutes, if you're a good listener, you can make that patient feel like they've truly been heard, that you've truly listened and understood to what they said in that allotted slot, rather than if you're a bad listener, that time will whiz by, the patient will feel like you didn't really take in anything they were saying, and so they're gonna have a much poorer opinion of you as a healthcare professional. This 2003 survey of 599 members of the general public really drove the point home for me, as they found, when presented with an open-ended question, interpersonal characteristics, e.g. someone who is friendly and someone who listens, were identified as most important. So there you have it, the top seven scientifically backed traits for being an exceptional doctor are communication, integrity, lifelong learner, humble, professional competence, compassionate, and being a good listener. Now, if you do feel like you somewhat fit the mold and medicine could truly be for you, then your next step is to find some medical work experience. And this next video will show you exactly why and how you should be doing that.